the plush side of technology. This is Daily Planet. And calling in the Dirt Squad. Uh, just trying to see whether uh, we can find any dust mites crawling along. We'll check out what organisms might be lurking around your desk and find out if your desk is any cleaner than a toilet seat. Some of us spend a lot of time at our desks. We often eat our breakfast, type emails, make a few phone calls, and eat some more. All in our cozy cubicle. Sure, we wash our hands, but how many of us regularly clean our workspace? A 2002 study by the University of Arizona and sponsored by Clorox revealed that office workstations contained 500 times more germs than a toilet seat. We wanted to find out if that was truth or fiction to see just what lurks under the mouse and between the keys. So, under cover of darkness, we brought in Frank Havercate, certified microbial expert. Time to go to work. Well, I've been asked to, to come in and do an environmental assessment. So, uh, first thing we're going to do is do an air quality assessment of uh, the newsroom here. And so, we're going to be uh, taking a laser particle count of the air, uh, which shows us particle levels. We're doing uh, chemical levels, uh, and we'll be doing some mold sampling and uh, collecting living index molds for us and sending it off to the laboratory for culture. Certain molds like Catomium or Stachybotrys can be toxic to human health, resulting in symptoms from ear infections to bleeding lungs. Luckily, our early results are not alarming. The particle levels uh, inside in the newsroom, various areas in the newsroom, bathrooms and in the office, uh, are much lower than outside, which is what I want to see. Frank also takes dust and vacuum samples of the desks and carpet. He even does a quick inspection for dust mites that may be hiding in the fabric of office chairs. There's uh, no evidence of uh, any microorganisms walking or crawling around, which is what I want to see. With preliminary air and dust samples looking good, it's time to tackle the myth. Well, we're going to take some bacterial swabs and some sewage uh, screen swabs of workstations, of phones, of staplers, uh, mouse, uh, keyboard and compare it to uh, toilet areas and see uh, if it's true that the toilet areas are cleaner than uh, workstations. For the bacterial swabs, the producer has chosen four desks to compare. The first is host Jay Ingram, then Natasha Stilwell, the boss's office, and a control desk that we cleaned earlier. And now the final room, uh, the toilet, to see how we compare. Overall, the office looks good, the bathrooms are very clean, but there's a couple of desks that might uh, Show us some fun stuff. Morning, Liz. How are you? The next morning, Frank brings the samples to the lab. We're at EMC Scientific. We're a laboratory that specializes in mold analysis. We also provide bacteria analysis services as well as dust characterization. Uh, the first test we're going to look at today is the spore trap. From here, like, we can see that the slide is quite clean. Uh, we don't see any fungal spores here. A dirty sample would look like this. The next test we're going to do is uh, going to determine the presence or absence of certain bacteria, namely E. coli and enterococci, as well as some swab samples total count for bacteria. E. coli is a bacterium found in raw food and fecal matter. Enterococci is also associated with fecal material, like sewage. To see if a sample contains such bacteria, the samples are suspended in a solution and left to incubate for 24 to 28 hours. That causes a unique chemical reaction. This is a an enterococci positive sample, and under the UV light, you can see the fluorescence show up. The final test is to determine total bacteria count. Samples are diluted, spread onto a plate, and then incubated for three to five days. If something grows, you have bacteria. This is from a computer keyboard. But because of the number of samples needed to be analyzed, the results will not be known on this day. I think it will take us around one week to get all the results, including bacteria and mold identification. And then after that, we're going to write in the report and call you and fax the report to you. Well, 
Well, the results are in. I've got uh, some good news and some bad news. Good news is we did uh, bacterial swabs of surfaces and there was no E. coli or enterococci, which is a really good news because that can make you really sick. Well, the bad news is this is the cleanest room in the office. The toilet seats fared the best in this room at four CFUs per square inch or colony forming units per square inch for total bacteria. Uh, the next uh, place where there was the faucet handles where you wash your hands, that was at 8 CFUs. Uh, the urinals had 11 CFUs of bacteria. And actually the worst area in the washroom itself was the door handle as you leave, uh, 23 CFUs, which would uh, indicate people don't want really wash their hands that well. This here is Natasha's work area. It uh, fared fairly well, actually. The keyboard and mouse were extremely clean. Um, the uh, phone uh, didn't fare as well. Um, it was uh, similar levels to the urinal, and we did find uh, some mold spores on the desk area. These are the finding for Jay's desk. Actually, his area was fairly clean. The mouse was clean, the keyboard was clean, uh, the desk was clean, in about uh, four CFUs. Uh, the only hot spot here was the phone at 30 CFUs much higher than the washroom. This is the uh, control area that was wiped down and cleaned before we took any samples. Uh, as would be expected, uh, it came back extremely clean, uh, with the exception of actually the phone. Even though it was wiped down, the little crevices of the ear and the mouthpiece did harbor bacteria at the extent of 41 CFUs per square inch. Well, unfortunately, we're here in the boss's office, and out of all the areas that we sampled with the bacterial swabs, uh, this one fared the worst uh, compared uh, to the washroom. Uh, the phone and the keyboard uh, were fine at 4 CFUs uh, per square inch. However, the mouse and the desk itself uh, didn't do well at all at uh, 38 and at 41 CFUs per square inch, which is dramatically higher than what we found any surface in the washroom. Next time, this producer might think twice about picking the boss's office. <laughs> So do you think that this suggests that rather than eating our lunch on our desks, and particularly near our telephones, yeah, we should eat on the CFUs. toilet seat? It's amazing, isn't it, Jay? People have real phobias about the toilet seats. You know, you see people... Putting strips <laughs> of toilet paper, yeah. No, hovering over it, no one wants to touch it, and yet we're more than happy to, as you say, eat the food off if our I'm desk. If I'm forced to use your telephone, I'm going <laughs> to wrap it in toilet paper. I think we should make the point that uh, the bacteria, unless you think the bacterial counts that he found are something serious, I mean, the environment's full of bacteria, most of which are not dangerous, and the counts of ones that could be dangerous, like E. coli, were very low. So. Yeah, and even some people would say that it's quite healthy to have some amount yeah. of bacteria around, you know, so we become um, immune to them. But I think it's really intriguing that as, as traffic moves from the washroom out into the office, somehow the bacterial flow goes with them and doesn't... Yeah doesn't really stay back in the it's washroom. the last time I'm ever going in the boss's office. Shame on you, Henry or, Kowalski. Or, 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 oh, oh, talk about being so fired. Or the men's washroom, for that uh, matter. <laughs> I don't tend to go in there, anyway. <laughs>